What's up everyone? Russell here and I have my little helper. Hi. Little Russell. And we're basically installing some aftermarket front and rear blinkers and a license plate relocator on our brand new Freedom Fighter 200. So we're going to show you how to do this. Very simple, straightforward, definitely something you can do even if you're not mechanically inclined. Um, I have kind of half of it done here in the late stage and have completely untouched this side. I'm going to do the same with the rear as well so we can kind of show you guys step by step on how to do this and make it super easy. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is there's a rubber grommet and a Allen right here on the side on each side of your your plastic fairing. So right here this is a number four Allen key and then there's a rubber grommet that goes right here which holds the headlight assembly in. Very easy to remove these little rubber grommets. You just take yourself a nice little pick and just kind of pop them right out. Super simple. Underneath the grommet you're going to have a size 6 Allen. Go ahead and remove those. However, make sure when you're removing the Allens here because those are the going to be the only thing holding your headlight assembly in that doesn't drop. You want to lay it down carefully. Um, if you want, even put something soft underneath here like a pad or something and kind of let your headlight sit. I chose to kind of let it dangle. We'll see how that works out. But once you do that, you're going to have access to your your headlight assembly, or not your headlight assembly, but your blinkers. So as you can see right here, these are actually two halves. It's not one whole unit. There's a Phillips screw that goes underneath there and screws up into there with this right here. And that is what's going to allow these two pieces to come apart. Now, even after you do that, these shrouds are still held in actually by your stock blinker. As you can see the stock blinker, there's a bolt right there. So once you undo that bolt, this plastic piece and your blinker, everything will come loose. Um, I'm gonna put a link down below for everything, you know, these aftermarket blinkers and whatnot. I might even put something in the video here to where to order them. These do come with connectors. However, I didn't have the female connectors for these. So what I'm cho choosing to do is I, I cut the wires here and I, on the other one, I cut them about there and stripped them and gave them as much to work with as possible so that I can put some hardware that I do have, some connector hardware on. But, you know, there's 16 different ways to make wire connections. So I'll let you guys decide on which one works best for you based on what you have. But I'm just working with what I got in the garage here. So... Basically, these will get spliced into the ones up there. Fairly simple. Now, in order to mount these, super simple. I got the other one right over here. And what I found best was removing this metal plate right off of there. And it allows you to, I believe, remove this plastic piece as well. And that's gonna allow them to sit a little bit more flush. And I don't know, sits a little deeper. I like the way it looks. So as you can see, right there. However, since you're removing this metal back plate, I'm choosing to use some washers on the back here to give it a little bit more support. Just something that I thought might help longevity. You know, these things are going to be vibrating. You don't want stuff to come loose and then you have to take it apart and redo it again. So that's what I chose to do. And basically you're going to remove this nut right here. You'll thread it back through your plastic piece, which actually goes into the metal mount right there, if you can see. And I would definitely advise using some kind of Loctite. I'm going to use red Loctite because I'm a psychopath. But blue Loctite would probably work just fine too. But basically, that is the majority of getting these switched out. All you have to do then is put everything back together afterwards. However, I'm going to do a little bit more work. 
And when we come back, I'll show you the difference and these in action. So I'm gonna get this one fully mounted up and kind of put in place where I want it. And we'll show you the comparison between the two. Okay, so I got them wired up real quick and I'm just gonna kind of throw the emergency blinkers on and show you the, the comparison. As you can see, these ones are sequential, quite a bit smaller um, than these massive, super, super bright. But, you know, when it comes to the blinkers, um, I'm more of a smaller is better. And these things, <laughs> you know, you might actually, uh, I mean, these are actually kind of beefy. They're a little heavy. And, you know, of course, it's a little joke, but a little weight reduction can't hurt. And also, aerodynamically, I mean, these things probably catch quite a bit of wind at speed, so every little bit helps though, right? But as you can see, we got them hooked up and so far so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the other side down here. We'll get it buttoned back together and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, we're back and they are installed. I think they... I think they look pretty good. So let's uh, turn this on. Not bad for Amazon, right? So that looks pretty good. A lot better than the stock ones, but I mean, that's pretty normal for any motorcycle. That's one of the first things you do is you do a rear fender delete, relocate the plate, and put some new blinkers on it. I don't think I have very many bikes that actually still have their stock blinkers. Um, Monkey has it still, which I actually kind of like those ones, might keep them. Just got that bike. That's the, that's the fun bike. It's the sticker bike. I'm not planning on doing any mods to that thing, but everything else, you know, we got, get those changed, so. Next up, let's go ahead and get the uh, this whole unit off here, see what makes that tick. Figure out how we're gonna mount the, uh, the delete there. Might be some good mounting points using these right here. We'll have to see what we find, but I'll do a little research, do a little work, and we'll get you guys back up when I figure something out. All right, welcome back everybody. So taking a look at what we're dealing with here, and I think I have a plan. So, I've already worked a little bit on the, the bracket. For as inexpensive as it was, very cheap. Um, it's actually a really nice bracket. It uh, feels like a aluminum, so it's very, very light, um, very adjustable. So, as you can see, I have the the included license plate light, which just screws right into the back there with some, I think those are fours or threes on the Allen. And the adjusters are five, but you can adjust this a bunch of different ways. And as you can see, I already have one of the, the blinker lights on. But what I think we're gonna do is I think the best place for this is, this is the, the battery box, the hang down. And right here and right here, and there's actually a small little opening right there, which I think is going to help us with some wiring management. But I think we're going to bring this right up, right up like this. I think that's probably the best spot. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem with clearance. However, mounting it right here. I do have this, as you can see, I can bring this bracket, I've only got one hand because I'm filming, but I can loosen this and these right here and actually bring this forward and up if clearance is an issue. However, after sitting on the bike, the rear of this is not nearly as soft as the, the front fork, so I don't think that's really gonna be an issue. And if you look, right here pretty much there's the battery there's the box and we're going to drill some holes i think coming right up here so there's nothing vital there that we're going to hit plus i'll be able to get 
like a socket down there to hold the hardware, which it didn't come with mounting hardware to the bike, but I've got some good stuff here. So we're definitely gonna use something like, we'll use something like this with some washers to get a good bite. And then we're gonna use some nylon lock nuts so that doesn't go anywhere. Might even throw some Loctite on it as well, just to be on the safe side. But with those nylon lock nuts, you probably won't need it. And then I was kind of looking at this and it seems pretty straightforward on how to get this off. Um, you've got your electrical connections right here, which run all the way back up right here. And actually run all the way up into the bike. What's up guys? A couple days later. Sorry it's taken so long to get this video out, but I had a little thing come up. Uh, basically I took a little bit of a spill. Broke my collarbone in a couple of places, so bummer. Not gonna be riding for probably at least uh, four to six weeks. We'll see what the doctor says tomorrow. But in the meantime, I thought I would see if I could actually get anything done in the garage. Um, so far, I've been able to do a little bit. It's slow going, especially since I only have limited use of my right arm and that's my dominant arm. But um, I figure let's get this video finished. So where we left off is we were installing the rear um, license plate holder and turn signals, tail light, that kind of stuff. Well, not tail light, but turn signals and license plate holder. And I do have, as you can see, the old one removed. And I also have marked out right there if you guys can see the copper colored dots on each side there that's where we're going to do the mounting points I'm going to drill through there and we'll mount it there and if you can see this right here that little nub right there we're going to make bigger and that's where we're going to fish the wires up through removing this tail section here is actually really really super easy you have literally three bolts and I mean it doesn't get any easier than that so these are the bolts that were removed so you those are I believe sixes for the Allen it's the bolts you remove the three of those this whole unit's gonna come down there are um, some tabs keeping that wire in place there's one that you can just lift the wire out which is right behind here I haven't removed it yet if you can see that tab right there so there's that one, and then there's three more that you'll need to remove um, using a, an eight mil, but it's these guys right here, and they're located, there's one there, hopefully you can see that, two and three. And then there's another eight mil holding a cover on all your wiring here. Remove that, and actually, as you can see, these plugins are gonna work very nicely with the ones you already have so my advice is while you have everything like this and together either write down on a piece of paper uh, mark these with masking tape label them uh, since you're pulling them through this I would probably advise just writing down what colors are what that way it'll save you a lot of time but basically pull these through and you'll be able to be done with this part right here. So make all these connectors, unplug those, fish them through here. And the next plan basically is we're going to take the wiring, this whole wiring set up here, and we're gonna fish it up through the frame and it's gonna come out, it's gonna come up right through there as you can see the, the daylight through there. And we're gonna move it along the frame and we're gonna utilize the tool area, which I have the tool kit removed right now, but that whole area right there, that's what we're gonna utilize because that little nub that we're gonna drill out and make bigger, I'm not sure if you guys can see it in camera there, it's kind of dark, but it's, it's down there. So we'll make that bigger. And that's where we're gonna do all our wiring. Um, one thing that I'm gonna do, because I don't like to have excess wire, is we're not gonna need this length of wire for sure, so I will, cut these, um, clip them back, and make them shorter. I'm gonna do all that stuff off camera. I mean, you don't have to do it, but 
I like wire management. I want to keep things nice and clean. So that's basically the plan. So I'll get that done off camera and I'll bring you guys back when I have that all finished. But just to recap, we're going to write down what all those connectors are, you know, for the signals, all that stuff. And we're going to pull this wiring out, fish it up through there, um, do a little measuring on how much wire we're going to need, trim, um, reconnect the connectors. Then we're going to drill out the mounting points and make that little drain nub right there a little bigger. And then we're going to attach the rear. Or we're going to attach the holder basically with some of this hardware here. Probably I'm going to go a little bit on the beefier side. We're going to obviously put some some washers and stuff behind it and some nylon lock nuts. I'll probably even slap some red Loctite on there because who doesn't love red, red Loctite, right? So that's the plan. Um, like I said, I'm going to do it off camera for two reasons. Number one, I don't need to bore you guys with that. It's, it's pretty simple on how to do that. And number two, I'm doing everything one-handed, so it was hard enough with two hands to film. So I'll be back in a few and we'll go from there. Okay, we had a little bit of change of plans after looking at this more. Uh, I found a better way to actually do this and easier. Does involve you taking some of the panels off, but no big deal. So basically you're gonna take one of the side panels off. In order to get that panel off, you will have to remove the, uh, the rear grab bar, but I think that's four tens. And then you have a five mil Allen, which is right here. And then you have two um, Phillips head screws which right here and right there and it pops right off pretty easy which will give you access to more of the bike and you can actually thread which I already have done here is thread the line up through here and we're going to terminate somewhere right around here um, there is one more clip that you can undo which I don't know if I can get you guys a good view of but it is up in there see where the that hose is right there. Um, that's also where the wires were running through as well. And there's a little zip tie on there. So cut the zip tie, thread it back up through there and basically just kind of bring it along here all the way up. So that's the way I think I'm going to do it. I know I could probably dive a little bit deeper into this and probably Bring this more behind the ECU or something like that but honestly in my condition this is this is the way I'm gonna do it but I do think this is gonna be a lot better and a lot easier than the way that I was gonna do it before it bypasses a lot of the things I was gonna to try to fish this through but basically all the magic is gonna happen right here all the connections everything like that and having this panel off is gonna give me a lot more room to work with so kind of a win-win but Little thing I thought I'd show you guys before I get everything mounted up. All right, well, pretty much finished. Just gotta button it up. I'll show a video of it uh, all put back together, but as you can see, blinkers are working. License plate light is on. It's all wired up. I did a bunch of heat shrink, even used some hot glue on the connections just to stabilize them, make them good. Wires are a little bit longer than I wanted to, but it was, especially with my one good arm, it, it just made it a little difficult to try to get to everything here. So they're a little bit longer than I wanted to, but if you're really skilled, you can get in there and make them a lot shorter. I'm going to tuck them in, zip tie them up, make them look a lot nicer, of course. But just wanted to show you guys the, uh, the result here. I think it's uh, a huge improvement. Getting a little bit of mobility back with my arm, but man, it's tough. As you can see, this is what we used to have. And then over here, we got the tail section. And what I really like about the tail section coming off is this mount right here that's left. This right here is gonna be perfect for mounting my GoPro. So I'm gonna go with a probably a shorty, this is a medium right here, but I'll go with a shorty one of these 
and we'll do a setup just like the old Grom here where you've got that low profile camera right there and you can shoot actually kind of a, an upwards view. You get some killer shots, especially when people are chasing you. So like I said, I'll get the slap back together. I'll show you guys the end result. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'll throw the link in the uh, description, probably post a picture or something like that of uh, the Amazon uh, link so that you guys know where to pick this stuff up. But yep, pretty simple. And I think it really, really makes the, the bike look way better. Um, there is a couple of things actually now that I think about it right here. I'm going to get some kind of sleeves or something like that. I, I want to try to hide some more of the wiring, but I think once a plate's on it, it unless you're really looking for it, yeah, I think it's, I think it looks really good. And this was super cheap. Um, just off the top of my head, I think this was all together like 50 bucks maybe to do this. So like I said, I'll throw the link down there and we'll be back when I get this put back together. Well, there she is, all buttoned up. That literally took under five minutes. You got your bolt here. You have another one on the seat. You gotta take the uh, grab bar off here, four tens. Um, there's a Phillips head screw here, here, and there. That has to come off to get the side panel off, but Easy peasy. Went back together real easy. I think this looks so much better. So much better. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'll work on getting a GoPro mounted up, wired in. Um, although these are super convenient up here, I think I am going to wire to the battery and then run it down using the old harness route for the, the lights, which will keep it hidden. That'll be real nice. But yeah, this is what it looks like. So, surgery tomorrow. Get my clavicle put back together. So I'll probably be down for a couple of days. However, after that, I'm gonna, of course, take it easy, but I'm gonna see what kind of stuff I can cook up in here and maybe shoot some videos for you guys. I do have uh, quite the backlog of footage from writing things like that. Maybe I'll post uh, the video of me crashing. Makes me cringe because I'm an idiot, but we all make mistakes and we learn from them, right? Right. Okay. So, till next time, guys. Peace.